All right, guys, we're here to part two of the lure design in Fusion 360 crash course. Today, I'm gonna to show you the power of using parameters and the loft command to sketch out a basic shape for a fishing lure that you can then manipulate super easily moving forward. Let's jump into Fusion 360. So what I wanna to make today is a twitch bait because I don't have a twitch bait in my arsenal currently, and it's about to be super twitch bait season along the Texas Gulf Coast, so I just always like to save before I get started because it makes things easier moving forward. Now, I mentioned before about using parameters and logging parameters around the measurements of your lure, and that's super important. So before I even start drawing or sketching or anything in Fusion 360, I'm gonna click this Modify Parameters button and I'm gonna put in all of those measurements that I talked about in the previous video. Length, width, max width point, max height point, nose dimensions, tail dimensions. So that way, if I need to change anything, if I don't like the length, if I don't like the width, I can just go in and modify these parameters and the entire model will update. It's it's super cool, bro. So I click on modify and change parameters. And I don't have any parameters in here because we're just starting. And user parameters is what we want. So I just click add. And the first one we're gonna start with is lure length. Now, where you get these from, you know, you can measure an actual lure. You could have a sketch. Someone could just tell you like, I want a three and a half inch swim bait or whatever, right? But let's log this length in right now. So I actually want 110 millimeter lure length to start with at least right we can totally change these later a side note when you ever see like yozuri minnows or usually anything overseas uh, and they have a number next to the lure that's usually its length in millimeters so for example this is the six cents wake 80 it's 80 millimeters long okay so we got our lure length here okay now i want my nose let's do nose width and I think we're gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of, I think it's about nine millimeters I'll start with. Nose height is next. And it's about 10.2. You do the same for the tail. I'm gonna do something a little bit different on the tail. We're gonna do tail height. Ooh, spelling is fun. So I'm gonna put my tail height in as 9.25. Okay, and then for our tail width, this is where some of the real coolness in parameters goes into. I'm actually going to use the tail height. And I want to basically make this 90% of the tail height. So I'm going to do multiplication. So an asterisk 0 0.90. You can see here that number of the value is actually what it's calculating. So 0 0.90, 90% 90 of the tail height. So now if I came in here later and wanted to say, hey, like... Uh, my tail is too big. Let's make it as nine millimeters straight. Then my tail height automatically will adjust. And so I, I'm kind of keeping the same ratio, if you will. By doing it this way, you don't have to go and update a bunch of numbers because they're all driven off a set of numbers. Okay, now we want to figure out what our max height of this lure is going to be. And I'm going to start out at 30 millimeters. Again, these are not written in stone. These are just to give you some kind of baseline starting numbers. The power of parameters is we can go in and change them whenever we want, but you want to get it somewhat close, like within a relative range. You don't necessarily want to be doubling these numbers later on. All right, my width is 18.3. That's the max width we run into here. So you can get by with just these measurements, but a couple of others that I like to have is the distance from the nose that the max height and the max width occur at. So if you're looking at this lure here, you know, where does it get the highest in relationship to the nose? And where does it get the widest in relationship to the nose? That's really gonna influence this slope as well as this slope here. And so by putting those in parameters, we can change them easily moving forward. So let's first do the max height distance. And that's gonna be 35. And then you guess it, max width distance. In this one, I probably want to drive off of my max height distance because I don't want those things crossing over, probably, right? Now, if you think you might want them crossing over, right? So when you start, your max height is in front of your max width, and then at some point it moves back, then you don't want to make this relationship. But generally speaking, uh, most of the lure designs I see, you want to make this relationship. So we're going to take our max height distance, and we're going to add 5 millimeters to that. And you can see it updates there, 40 millimeters. So 35 plus five is 40. 
Now let's put these into action. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a sketch on this front plane. So I come in here, I just draw a line and I use my nose height parameter, hit enter. And I want to make sure that's on my center line. So I click that and click that. That's the midpoint constraint. I put that on that line. Okay. So there is basically the inside half of the nose. So now what we're going to do is going to draw another line that is my nose width. So we're just going to click that there. We're going to do nose width. Now, the way we've written this is that's going to be the full width. So I want half of it. So I divide by two. Now you could have divided by two when you put the parameter in, but I like to do it this way in case for some reason I need to go to a full width lure design. I can just use those parameters straight up. I like to use kind of flat sided twitch baits with a little bit of an angle on them. So let's do that right now. Now this is another place that I could have used a parameter instead. Maybe we'll go back and add one, I think. So I'm gonna go back up to modify change parameters. Okay, so I'm gonna hop back in here and add another user parameter, which is going to be my body angle. And this is an angle degree, and it's going to be 100. Because it should be, if I'm drawing a straight up and down line, I want to go this way, should be at 100 degrees. Let's see. Okay, so I made this an actual line. I don't want that. I want this to be a construction line. So, because it's not part of the actual design, it's literally just holding my space value out there. Okay, so now I'm going to draw another line, a real line. I go here, and I want this to be the nose height. And I'm going to go times 0.65. So 65% of the height. And then I'm going to use that body angle to be my angle. Hit enter. Now we're floating. I want to midpoint this to here. And we're dimensioned. Pretty sweet. Now I'm going to draw a fit point spline. Oops. Now if you can get away with an arc here, that would be better. But I've done this about nine times already and I can't get an arc to work. So we're going to use a fit point spline. And I'm going to draw two of them. And the reason fit point splines are not the best thing to use. You have to add a lot of dimensions to them to get them to solve. So first thing I want to do is I want this arc up here to come out straight. So I get it close to horizontal and then put a horizontal vertical constraint on. And then this guy, I want to actually line up with this line. So I'm going to drag, oops, got to hit escape to get out of my horizontal vertical constraint. I'm going to drag him and he'll actually snap right there. Okay. And then I'm going to shrink him down a bit. So he has this a parallel constraint on this line now. And if I'm happy with that, I need to hit the D key and dimension these guys here. And just cause I'm like kind of super nerdy, I always try to make them kind of the next rounded number. And then, so once you have this angle of these handles and all of them dimensioned, your sketch will become properly constrained. So now I need to do the same thing down here on this, but we don't need to watch that. We'll bring it into the next sketch. Okay, so we got our nose. That took long enough, right? But it's gonna be the same process moving forward that we just did there, just in three different steps. I'm gonna skip the max width. I'm gonna assume that the max width point and the max height are the same. So we're gonna draw the middle of our lure now. Basically the max height point and the max width point. We're gonna say they're the same here. So I'm gonna create a new construction plane, an offset plane from this front plane. And we're going to use our max height distance to create this plane. And then it pumps it back to 35. We're gonna right click and create sketch. All right, we're gonna turn off this other sketch because we don't need it right now. And now we're going to create another line. This is my max height. Whoop. All right. And this one, I'm going to midpoint again to there. Now we have our max width. We're going to create another line. This is going to be a construction line because I don't actually need it to be a real line. I'm going to use my max width and again, divide by two. And we do want to make sure it's straight. All right. So here I am. I'm going to draw a line. And again, I'm going to make this one max height max height, and I'm going to go times 0.65, again, 65%. And this is going to be my body angle. And hit enter. And I'm done. And I'm going to midpoint this guy here. 
on this. That's going to keep it the fright distance away. And I'm going to hit escape and add my fit point splines again. Now I kind of already mentioned this before, fit point the splines are super fiddly, so you want to have the least amount of spline points that you can get away with. And here I think we can get away with two. And again, process is the same. We're going to take this guy, we want him to come straight out, so we're going to put a horizontal vertical constraint. We're going to pop this guy into a tangency there, and I think we need to shrink him down just a little bit. Same thing here. Make sure he's horizontally vertical constrained. This guy we're going to tangent constrain and make him a little shorter. Then all I need to do is go around and dimension these guys and make them pretty numbers. Okay, now we're on to the next part, which you guessed it, is the tail. We're getting close, guys. Trust me. We're almost there. So we're going to create another construction plane off this front plane. And this, we're going to use our lure length parameter. So now we have a plane that is exactly as long as our lure is going to be. And guess what? We're going to create a sketch on it. Shocking. I know. We've never seen this before. I'm going to speed up through this, guys, because really I'm just going to use the parameters for the tail, tail height and tail width, to do the same exact thing I did in the first two lines. Remember to divide that one by two, bro. Okay, quick note here, I didn't give my tail an angle because I like to have uh, a lot of uh, meat there, if you will, on the lure because that's probably where I'm going to hook most of the fish and I want to give it the most material to hold as possible. So I'm not using that angle here. Okay, guys, quick point on that spline. You saw the ones on the outside. Since my lines are vertical now, I had to really shrink down the uh, circumference of that bend. I'm sure it has a word. Maybe it's the tangency of it. I don't know. But I made a really, really tight curve there to make it kind of even. Okay. We're almost there, guys. I promise. Turn back on all my other sketches and you see I have an outline of a lure here. There is one more thing I have to do before we actually create the body, the side profile. Now, most twitch baits are kind of like this uh, Meridine here, right? You can see it has a nice curve across the top, but the bottom kind of juts in right here. Now, I can measure that, but I'm just going to fiddle with it, if you will, okay? So in order to do that, we need to draw rails for our loft here. So the key to rails is they have to touch all of the profiles in your loft. So we have these three profiles here and I need to make sure they touch. And the best way to do that I found is to use the project intersect command. So what that does is it projects into this sketch all the points where those profiles actually cross that sketch plane. So basically it makes it easy to snap to it. I'm gonna go back to our old friend fit point spline and you can see if I come in here, I zoom in, there is that projection point. I can kind of double check by going, turn a little sideways here and that's it. And I click on it. Click on the next one and click on the last one and click on the check mark. Now, as long as I don't change anything, it's going to stay um, fully dimensioned. And I mean, that's pretty good, right? Like that's not going to mess up too much stuff. Now we go to the next one. Click here, click here, and click here. Okay. And you get basically the same shape. That's not what we want. And again, I often see people trying to put a point in right in here, but you don't really need one. And it's going to add more frustration to you later. Okay. So I'm going to hit the escape key and I'm just going to come back here and grab this handle and pull it straight up and kind of straight out. Just like that. I might even be able to get away with a horizontal vertical constraint on it. Yeah, that's not too bad. And let's come in here and adjust this guy. I think that looks pretty good. Now, I have that constrained. This one is not constrained. So now I have to go in and add all the dimensions to these guys. And now I need to add all of the angles. And this is where things get not fun. Because for some reason, this can be a super fiddly process. Now, I don't have to type anything. I can just hit Enter. And now I'm fully dimensioned, right? Because everything has an angle. This one's horizontal vertical has a dimension, right? So we're all good. So let's finish the sketch. Now is the time you've been waiting for. Okay, we're gonna go in and create a loft. Okay, and now we got profiles up here and I can just start clicking my front, middle and back. Now you can see by default, we get a pretty boring shape. Now one thing I'm gonna show you real quick that we're not gonna use, but what I find is usually a pretty good way to rough in a lure 
is on this back profile, right? Profile number three. If I change it to direction, it kind of necks it down, right? These are different curve profiles. And I can grab this and I can move it and I can, you know, neck it down a little more. And all this is doing is kind of determining where, you know, the second profile, which is the middle and the third profile, where they start and end. So if I move this further away, I'm reducing the amount of influence, if you will, the middle sketch has. So if you're gonna do a completely even lure, um, this can get you pretty close to that classic fish shape. But what happens is when I do rails, I come down here, I click add, I click my top rail and my bottom rail, and now I have the exact shape I want. All right, now don't worry about these sharp edges in front here. We're gonna add fillets to them. But what I really wanna show you is now how we can manipulate this lure design just using those parameters. So we're gonna to come to the right. I'm gonna click modify, change parameters. Okay, so here's my box. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Let's go for an easy one. Let's say I decide I wanna make this thing 90 millimeters long. I come in here, I change this to 90, hit enter, boom, 90 millimeters. I wanna make it 135 millimeters long, boom. 135 millimeters. Now you can see what happens is all my proportions stay the same and the location of my nose and more importantly, my max height point or max height distance, right? I think there's probably a formula that you could get into where you base your max height distance on the overall length. But let's put this back to 110. Okay, and now maybe you say like, look, I want this to start and be a little bit more aggressive. So my max height distance, right? I wanna move that closer to the nose. So I hit that 20 and now I got that ugly thing. Maybe it's 29, that looks better, right? And so you can mess with that. You can see everything falls into place. Nothing's blowing up. This is the power of parametric modeling. I can make all of these changes. The computer does all the math for me. I don't have to think about it. Okay, and actually I wanna make this a little bit smoother. So I'm gonna pop this back to 40. And you just play with this all day long, right? Okay, so maybe I think the nose is too wide. We can come back in here and just do like, you know, 8.3, narrow that down. All of these things are adjustable tail too tall. Let's make that 8.3 as well. And I could easily tie these two together, right? I could do my nose height. I could tie into my tail height if I wanted to make that a percentage off, right? I could just come in here and type in nose height times 0 0.80. Whatever height I change my nose to, I want my tail to change to be 80% of that. So now I can come in here and make this 12 and now my tail gets bigger too. I don't know if you want that or not, but it's kind of cool and you can do it. Hey guys, that's it for this lesson. Obviously, we're gonna keep working on this Twitch bait moving forward. If it's not clear to you already, we're gonna design only one half of this, and then we're gonna use the mirror command to just make a copy of the half. That way we do literally half the work. Take care, tight lines.